Hi, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com, and I'm back with another developer diary for my breeder simulation. And it's been about six months since I did the last diary, and that's because I've been taking a break from breeders to kind of build up my skills in Unity and JavaScript and ZBrush. Uh, I was working on a side project called Crash Lander that you can check out at CrashLander.com or BrainBlinks.com. And uh, I feel now that I've learned enough about Unity that I'm ready to tackle all of the uh, great ideas and plans I've got for Breeders Evolution. I got so many great ideas from that first release from everybody who played it. And uh, uh, after thinking about it so long, I think I'm ready, ready now to implement my plans. <laughs> and uh, the first thing I'm trying to do here is add a little bit of evolution into the mix which was the number one requested feature from the first go around and it was pretty obvious that that's what the simulation needs to stay interesting um, and my first test has been pretty successful I've got the mothers passing on to the seeds and the next generation some color information and just a simple size variable that controls the size and the mass of these creatures so each generation there's a slight variation in the, the color and a slight variation in the size and that's the only thing that changes in between each generation so what I've done for this simulation is I've set up kind of three pockets of these the same critter same script running all these critters this one is a hilly situation uh, with a lot of steep banks and hard to get at catalysts a lot of these they can't reach at all right in their present state because they're just too heavy. As they get smaller, um, the force that's pushing them stays the same, so as they get smaller, they're able to travel farther and higher with each push. Over here in the center section, I have kind of a flat area that's kind of easy living for the herders. It's just a flat open area with plenty of catalysts, the open plain, the buffalo roaming around just kind of grazing wherever they want so this is more like a coin flip as to who's gonna survive and who's who's gonna die and over here we have kind of the uh, sweatshop breeder chicken factory of the herder world um, I got a big pit here just filled with herders and a, a steady easy supply of the catalyst so um, basically over here what seems to happen every time I've watched it is they all grow bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes by because there's a big benefit to taking up more space you got more chance to hitting one of these catalysts as they come down it's true crowded in there to move around and uh, get any momentum so uh, the the bigger ones tend to succeed in this area over here in the rocky hilly terrain it's kind of the opposite the uh, over time Every time I've watched it, the critters get smaller and smaller and faster and faster because there's a big benefit over here to be able to go up on these higher plateaus and get at the capsules that are up higher and get to the other ones quicker before your neighbors do. It's really interesting to me that just by passing on this one variable um, between the generations that just in 20 generations or so you can see a marked difference in the behaviors just depending on the terrain they're sitting in of course these are extreme examples but uh, it's really interesting to me and it kind of just uh, brings to the forefront the reason I'm making the simulation is the, these kind of complex behaviors that are arising from such simple things so let's let this run for a while and uh, I'll do a kind of a time-lapse doohickey and we'll see how they come out after 30 or 40 generations.
All right, I let it run for about uh, 50 generations this time. And uh, you can see here that uh, over in the rough terrain, we've got some really energetic little guys all just about able to get up to the top of this hill now and explore all this area to suss out all the tasty catalyst. Actually took quite a bit longer this time for them to get this size. They're about a half a meter. in size whoops see now they're getting that guy's getting around really good <laughs> so let's go over to the other patch see what's going on on this side and kind of what you would expect since it's more of a coin flip over here as to who survives they have some larger spheres some smaller spheres various colors it's much more of just a wide variety of different shapes or sizes not shapes and up here in the the breeding pit got some pretty big spheres so what i'm going to do is grab some of these big boys and put them over on the other side and see what happens just for a bit of comparison. So you can see uh, just the different environment and the different food supply or catalyst supply has really made a big effect on just that one variable that I'm passing as the DNA. So I'm really excited about the possibilities that this system has. And I think what I'm going to set up is uh, uh, sort of a pool of uh, of stats that can be applied to different areas of the creature, say how much power it has when it's moving, the size, um, how many seconds it lives, and things like that. And I think that will help balance out the system so that they don't all just grow into the most powerful creature that's available with the with their type of locomotion and whatnot, so I'm excited about the project and I'm glad to get started on it again. So thanks a lot to anybody who is out there and who's been following the project the whole time and patiently waiting for me to get going on this again. And I'm still interested in hearing what you have to think about the project. So uh, go on to breedersgame.com and let me know what you think. Um, thanks a lot. I'll catch you next time. Bye.